In this lesson, you will understand and create levels. In order to complete the lessons, you will first need to download the free datasets. This link is shared in the video description. Grids and levels are finite planes that act as datums for Revit elements. In the example below, floors and structural framing are constrained to each level and remain parametric when the levels change. Let's begin by opening up our previous project, Project A. Or of course, if you've just carried on from the previous lesson, you can simply just carry on from that point. So here, I'm going to open up Project A. And before we start to create levels, which will be our first task, we need to move these elevation markers. Now, of course, when we inserted our CAD drawing, we inserted it at 00, zero which is the internal origin. So hence here, you can now see that our elevation markers are now not positioned correctly for the project. Why would this matter? Well, if I just singly select the black arrow of this elevation marker here, you can see instead of elevating the building structure, it's simply going to cut it in a section. That means if it's looking in this direction, I would only capture things on grid four, three, two, and one. So I want to ensure that both the elevation marker and the actual view line here are moved back into this location. To do that, I'm better off just window selecting these two elements. Once they're selected, if you take a look down onto the status bar here, you'll see here that we have a filter option and then the number colon two refers to how many objects are in a selection set. So you can see here I've got two elements selected, which is correct. And now I can put my cursor over those objects and I get a move icon and I can just drag those to a slightly better location, perhaps over here. And of course, now if I select the elevation marker, the head of the elevation, you'll see here that that elevation is going to start to look from this blue line here. So I'll do a very similar thing for the remaining markers. So I'll move this one down. We'll shift this one into place over here, perhaps. And this one over here. So the elevation markers are now moved into a better location. We'll now begin by creating levels. It's better to create the levels first, as you'll see when we create the grids, the grids will then extend to the top level. Otherwise, we'll have to stretch the grids manually afterwards. It doesn't matter if you need to create the grids first and you haven't got the levels. You'll just need to make sure that you would stretch those grids or use a scope box. What we're going to do here is create the levels first. So in the project browser, go ahead and open up the south elevation. So the South Elevation is now open, and you can see here that we have two default levels, level one and level two. If we take a look in the project browser, we'll note here that we have level one and level two. These are the corresponding plans. I additionally have an analytical plan for level one and level two. This would isolate the analytical model or the engineering view. We'll come on to that later. What we need to do first though, is begin by renaming some of these levels. So I'm going to begin with level one. I'll select this and then pick the text. And here I'm going to name this 00 hyphen ground. And then prompted to rename the corresponding view. So that's referring to this view over here. So you'll notice that when I say yes here, level one will then turn to 00 hyphen ground. Yep, and there we go. We'll now do a similar thing here. So I'll select level two, pick on the text and in this case, this is going to be 01 hyphen first. And again here, I will rename that corresponding view and you can now see the views replaced with the new text. I'm simply prefixing the view name with 00 and 01 so they land in the right order in the project browser. Now in later exercises, you'll realize here that we can actually customize the browser organization and have other methods of organizing our views. And that would become very important for larger projects. But you know, to start with here, we'll just rely on this method to get the views in the correct order. I also need to change the level here. You can see that this is default into three meters and it might be that our particular structure needs a level from ground to first of 3.6 meters. So there are a number of ways to do this. I can select the level line and you'll notice that pretty much anything you select will have a temporary dimension attached to it. So of course here I could select this dimension and I could type in here 3600 and that would then change that level. I'm just going to use control Z here to undo that and I'll show you another method. I could select uh, the level again 
And of course here in meters, I could type in 3.6. So why would this be in meters and the temporary dimensions in millimeters? Well, these levels, the actual type of these levels here is set to report in meters. But of course we could change that if we wanted to. The other thing to realize here is that default level line is defaulting to finish floor level, FFL. So again, in a later exercise, we'll be amending these and we'll probably create two additional levels. We'll have SSL for structural slab level and perhaps TOS for top of steel. While we're here, it's also worth talking about units. Now, in our previous lessons, we learned actually how to create units and how to set the units for a Revit project. And we set up our units here to be in millimeters. However, if we were modeling a legacy building, perhaps post 1971, then of course the dimensions are going to be an imperial. So rather than actually converting those into millimeters, in Revit, we can actually type in those imperial values. So for example, here, if this was going to be um, 15 feet, I could type in 15 and then FT. And then if I wanted to add uh, inches after this, I could then type in six and then IN. And you can then see that Revit will then convert that to its metric counterpart. If you have fractional values that you want to add in, uh, for example, here I could say six feet. Notice now I'm using the foot symbol. So I could say six feet and then I could do perhaps six and one quarter inches. And again here you can see that Revit will then convert that. You can also use this as almost like a calculation tool. So I could enter the equal symbol here and then I could add in two arguments. So here I could say 1500 uh, plus 1500 plus 600. So you can see there that I can put a string of values together and then Revit will then compute that and come up with the total. So again, all of these techniques can be used any time you're asked for a dimensional value. So that's uh, something worth noting. Okay, so let's now go ahead and create some additional levels here. So on the structure ribbon on the far right hand side, you can see here that we have the datum panel. And on the datum panel, you'll note here we have level. I'm going to begin by clicking level. And the key things to note here is that we have this context ribbon here where it says modify place level. You'll notice here we have the context panel, which currently just shows me able to draw a line or pick an existing line. Obviously, that makes sense because after all, we are creating a level. And then on the options bar here, you can see that by default, a new plan view will be created. And in here, if we wanted to, we could configure what plan type we wanted it to use. But of course, the default here is a structural plan. OK, so let's go through a couple of different options we'd have to create new additional levels. So you'll notice here when I move my cursor towards the start or the end of a level, I get this extension line, the blue dotted line. And this is really what we need to see if we want to then enter in a value. So let's now say I want a further 3600. I could type in here 3600 and press enter. And now I can then uh, terminate that level when I see the extension line on the right hand side. That gives me a total value of 7.2. And then here I can rename it. So this one will be 02 second. And again here, I want to rename the corresponding view. And you'll note here now, I have an additional view created. Another way we can do this, which I prefer actually, is to go ahead and use pick lines. So if I select pick lines here, I'm going to put an offset in on the options bar of 3600. And here you can see that I can just move over my existing level here and it will of course offset a new level up 3600. Then in here, I can call this 03, and this will be third. Again, I'll rename the corresponding view. And now I'm going to do another couple of uh, levels down here for the substructure. So in here, I'm just going to initially have 11 in here of perhaps 1000. I could move this afterwards. This is going to represent the top of foundation. Notice here, I've got to make sure I do get the right direction. And here, this is going to be negative 01 TOF. So that's going to give me top of foundation in there. And I'll put one more in here. And this is going to represent my lift pit. So 
Again here I'll just start off with uh, 2000. I can obviously change and amend these levels afterwards. And in here I can change this and this will be negative 02 hyphen. And in here I'll call this one lift pit. And again I'll rename the corresponding view. Okay, so our levels are now created. I've just pressed escape here, and before we actually um, conclude this video on the levels, let's take a look at some options we've got to present these levels. If I select the level, you'll notice here, of course, that we can rename the level as we know, or change the level here. If I look on the left hand side, you'll notice that I've got a checkbox, and if I check that, you can see here that the level name will then appear on this side. So now, of course, I've got two levels showing. If I only wanted the level to appear on one side, I could obviously uncheck this. Now, doing that for all of these levels is all well and good, but there's a much better way to do it, which I'm going to show you. So I'm going to uncheck the checkbox here and recheck it over here. And what I want to do is globally for all these types of level, I want to make sure that the level head appears on the left hand side. So to do this, I'm going to edit the type of the level. So if I select this level in here, You'll notice in the properties window, I have the instance properties of this particular level here. So you can see I've got the elevation, the story above, the computation height, scope box, and so on. In this example here, I'm going to select edit type. And when I select edit type here, you'll notice that we have symbol at end one default or symbol at end two default. What I want to do here is have the symbol at the end one, i.e. the start of that level line. And if I click OK, you can now see all those level heads change to the left hand side. Okay, so that concludes this video for levels. The next video will address grids.